four space creating heroes, one one Spectre that just has yes. to ult and can be farming the entire time. So exactly. that feels a lot better because now they're working towards something instead of just assuming that they have to win team yep. fights. Even if Elements loses team fights, if Spectre's still farming, then they're okay. Well, and it's and it's not just that, right? It's it's that any one of these, any time there's a big ult, right? The Spectre's instantly there exactly. to get in on the kill. Right. And that's cool, too. I mean, as long as one guy gets a good ult, then three or four other people are going to be able to Anti get mage. fantastic damage. And anime oh, so It greed. is the mid uh, so trying to match yeah, up with the Ember. Kind of yeah. oh, so yeah. I think they're trying to match greed with greed. Yep. And I think Element's lineup is extremely greedy, while Vega at least has some like early aggression they can get out of it. So. All right. You can we'll talk uh, more out. about that during your cast. Uh, it's yep. time for us to decide who we think has the upper hand in this uh, particular draft. Is it going to be team fights? Is it going to be pickoffs? That's so basically I, the question. I actually thought that the last pick AM was a little bit too greedy by mm. Vega. I thought that they could have punished Elements lineup uh, pretty easily from that standpoint. Um, I, I think Vega's the better team, but I'm actually going to go with Elements based on this draft. I think they're going to win their first game. All right. I feel like Elements is, I love their draft. It's fantastic because it's psychotic. It's in your face, and uh, it's just a, a shitload of damage and fun. And I'm not going to win, though. I'm going to go <laughs> yeah. for Vega, for sure. I'm uh, going to go for Vega as well. I, I just, uh, we're going to find out. <laughs> we're going to find out if those team fights are actually going to happen. And if they do, I mean, that will be hype. I would love to see Elements Pro Gaming win. We're going to find out if that's going to happen. Over to our commentators, Odie Pixel and Fog. Black Hole! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second series of the day. Of course, we have the wonderful Vega Squadron this time Kurt turning up to play against Elements. We've just seen the two drafts. Uh, well, what are we thinking, Fog? So the, the response at the end of the day from Vega Squadron to slip in the anti-mage, something that's uh, going to be able to scale on par with the Spectre. Do, do you like that decision? Say, all right, we can, we can uh, get a beefy carry as well if you we want to do that. I actually thought I was, I was kind of agreeing with Alan. I thought yeah. that they were going to go for some type of like aggro thing and pressure more okay. because they see how greedy that Elements lineup is. But now they go for the anti mage. They want to just match that, and they also have the Nyx to kind of work with the anti mage. Obviously, with the mana burn, so he can get bigger mana voids later on. And they have some great catch for the Ember Spirit split pushing. I think they just want to have some type of like reserve. You know, they they don't want it to rely on Ursa going into the late game. That's like that's a terrible kind of way to affect it. In. Yeah, for sure. They didn't want to rely on just like crushing the lane super hard. So they wanted to have you know Aloha to at least have that kind of backup plan. And uh, do you think, well, because we saw Ursa uh, and Ember being picked up in a game before, didn't we? And I think the, the Ember actually, it dodged the lane, was it? I think it was when Secret were playing the Ember. Yeah. And they took it away from the safe lane. Is it that bad that, do you feel that's going to have to happen again here? Do you see it? Can Elements switch their lanes around? That's all, I guess with the Spectre, it's very hard, really, to... I think they're locked in their lanes. Yeah. I don't think that they can. They can't. I mean, I, I guess other than having backup hanging around the mid, but even so, a Warlock and a... Uh, as anking, it's it's not like they're gonna be able to do too much to, to make that mid lane that much easier with the you know, when they're level one as such. It's yeah, I mean they can the sanking can kinda of like sit there and maybe like counter gank in a way, but mm. they don't really have like the damage to deal with an Ursa that early. So yeah, I don't know. Elements is gonna have to make some kind of adjustment, they'll just play around the Ember because that is a very, very hard matchup. I mean I mean Ping is he is a good Ember yeah, player. That is one of his like most comfortable heroes, yep. so maybe we'll see him do something unexpected versus an Ursa, but that is a dubious task. Yeah, and the lanes from uh, Vegas Squadron should be pretty self-explanatory. I mean, uh, and a lot for them to aggressive. We have seen teams in the past go aggressive with a Spectre lane. Is there yeah. any chance that Elements could try and go head-to-head -head with the Anti-Mage lane? Is, is that of any benefit for them if they do that and get the 1v1 matchup uh, between the, the SK and the Clock? Uh, sorry, uh, SK and the Nyx Assassin. Or Enigma, that... you mean, right? Uh, sorry, Enigma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, an, yeah, yeah. I think Enigma. they're just going to go safe lane. But yeah. we are paused, but it's, we paused. should be getting started in a moment. Yeah. Um, I think that they just kind of leave the lanes as is. At least they're going to be denying a little bit of farm from the Anti-Mage with the yeah. Eidolons. You know, he just always pulls the range creep back and able to jungle and get farm off of that. But I think, yeah, I don't, I don't think that they want to put Spectre all the way up there. It makes it awkward to kind of like make the switch around. And Clockwork can actually do a lot of work. I mean, I, again, I'm looking at Vega and I'm just looking at Sayoma. This guy has been the shining star for this team, in my opinion, in their early game and just causing havoc all over the map. Yeah, with those, uh, with the brown boots straight up, that's this Enigma is going to try his best to stay in that lane. Is is Mitch yeah. going to be pretty safe there, or the the CM and and Clock cause uh, quite a 
quite a bit of trouble for him. I think this is just a new build on Enigma. You just uh, like S4 boots, was doing a lot. You rush your arcane yeah. boots really quickly okay. from the jungle. You don't go the soul ring build no. anymore, no. and you're able to kind of like survive if they do kind of like rotate on you. It's just it's just the new approach that people are doing. Okay. Arcane boots are so good for your team. Let's see. Coming out here, uh, D lanes, as expected. Sides. A lot of pressure will be on ping in that middle lane to try and come out as uh, best he can with the Ember Spirit up against G. It's not going to be his ordeal at all. Yeah. I really, I, I don't know. They have a lot ways, a lot of ways to catch like the Ember Spirit and Spectre when they are on the sides of the map. So that's why I'm, I'm really liking Vegas kind of approach in this game. Like uh, Nyx is just such a good pick versus all these kind of heroes. Yes. Like these like big comboing heroes. He just clicks Carapace yep. and he can cut, kind of counteract everything, and he can catch everybody split pushing. And then they have the anti mage to back up on. So we'll see if Elements is able to come out of this laning phase nicely. For Looking sure. at LeBron. I mean, yeah. Let's but, see what he can get done in terms of the movements. The catch is very t like, tough too, like, trying to catch an anti-mage. Of course they have the chains and then they have sanking and then if he does blink they can have the haunt afterwards to follow the blink. But later on stages their damage for anti-mage is going to be very minimal to try to bring him down. Yeah, it's and very as you elusive. mentioned, well with the Nyx and, and more, there's as many the clock work, the cogs, there's a lot of ways for the side of Vega to disrupt any sort of advances being made by elements. Uh, I also, yeah, just overall it's going to be a game where it's it feels unlikely that we're going to see Mitch get some black holes off us. There's just so many ways that Vega can put a stop to it. Yeah, and they're also, they're not going to like take up, unless they come up really super hard in the laning phase, they're not going to try to take these like straight up big 5v5 team fights. I mean, who would want to versus Sanking Enigma Warlock? They're going to just try to split them up, make them use the ulti ultimates at super at the non as beneficial scenarios. Maybe like one hero or something along those lines. LeBron just going to try to mirror Sayoma's movement. And we're just trying to leech experience from that Enigma. Braun gets eyes on him. We're starting to hit into each other, but of course Shimmer with the battery assault will uh, cause LeBron to, to have to get himself away. The superior damage output here at level 1. Forcing the XP split three ways, blocks the hard camp as well. Makes the jungle will be slowed down. We'll see how both of our, our safe laners do with the pressure that uh, each one's trying to go for the, yeah, giving this lane to LeBron as you touch upon this. I mean, a low hard dance should still pro feel pretty safe up here, shouldn't it? It's very hard for elements to, to do much about this AM. Yeah, he's gonna, he he's should gonna full free, free farm yeah. up there. I mean, the reduced couple CS from the idol undenies, but other than that, yeah, anti mid should be just fine in here. And that being said, though, Sanking goes for the caustic level one, and he's actually able to pressure a bit. Okay. Just get some decent harass, but Aloha does have a lot of regen. Tango is left in the south. Good approach though by Elements. This is actually very good, having the Sanking here. It, it definitely messes with Anti-Mage in the first few levels. Caustic applying every single time. Silent just jungling. Sayoma still just trying to be annoying. Now he's going to have to return to the lane with Silent. This could be where they try to make a play. They are only level 2 though. On the CM. Edging towards the mid lane as well. See us there at the moment. 13 for 5 against the 7 for 0. So that definite lead for the Ursa as expected. Up between the two of them. G. The edge up top. LeBron. Again, yeah, coming in close. But yeah, the presence is silent. Just holding him back with the frostbite. Oh man, Ping is in such a scary spot right now. His lane yeah. is completely messed up. Look, look at the positioning. G has it all the way on his high ground. And Sayoma sitting around in the area too. He's just getting every single deny and last hit for G. Proving to be very, very tough lanes here at the moment for Elements. Yeah, even Afterlife should have a pretty good time down here. Like Spectre, yep. Warlock, they can't really zone Nyx out. He's got the Poor Man's Shield. He even picks up a Quelling Blade to help himself last hit under Tower. And then an Arcane Aura so he can spam his spells a little bit harder. Just seeing there, the Ursa. G. Those stacks up, bottom lane. Swift. Not by the Shadow Word. So as you mentioned, very hard for the two of them to really hurt that Nyx Assassin too much. You can see what Elements is trying to go for though. They're trying to trade and pressure. Is Pain. he gonna okay. Okay. chase down? But yeah, okay. those chains. Chains. Very scary lane for Ping. Yeah. With the levels down there, we're level four, nearly level five. 
So Elements is trying to slow down the anti-mage mostly though, with yeah. LeBron's movement so far. Instead of like sitting around mid, instead of following Sayoma so much, he's just like, alright, I'm just gonna kind of perch up and be like this pseudo offlaner in a way, and try to pressure the anti-mage inside. I know Clockwork's running around, and I know CM's just gonna be jungling, but... Speaking of that, we do have the first smoke of the game coming out from Vega. The CM and the Clockwork pair up, and they're gonna look for their first frag, try to secure anti-mage's lane. Alright, good wrap around on Mitch, could certainly do it. So just level one on the Clockwork though. And uh, with Eidlons, a lot of ways to tank up those patchy assault hits. I'm uh, gonna make a good turn attempt for it though. Here we go, leading with the first slow into the frostbite. And wow, with the damage coming through from the low hard arts, he wants get this hit. He does. He <laughs> wanted that. He wanted that bounty, and he'll find it. A low hard arts first blood, bringing down Mitch. That off lane position. Actually charging in as well, forcing the bronzer back. Quite have the damage for it. TP back will be there from Mitch. Very, very good start here for the anti-mage, for Aloha. Mid lane continues. Really show the, the struggle of the Ember, Ember against this Ursa. Once G has those face boots as well, it'll be very hard for Ping to stay in lane. Yeah, he's just going to have to go jungle, yeah. and he already starts to. Bottom lane Spectre is full free farming, as kind of expected, but Nyx is getting great levels and great last hits. He's at 22, he's got his raindrop finished up, almost level 5. So Empire, or Empire I say, I see Afterlife and I think Empire still, but... Oh, for sure. <laughs> Vega coming out to a pretty good start in this one after the first couple of five minutes. Here we go, first rotation, another rotation coming out from Seoma, making his way toward bottom. He's trying to look for Goji. They know that Afterlife's getting good levels. He's trying to steal the bounty runes too. He's level three, so he's got that level two battery salt for that high burst damage, or high increased damage at least from that. Yep. And and he's, he's, he's gonna walk in and uh, go for swift turning here. They've got the stun to follow through with the battery, so it's, it's gonna be a, quite a bit of damage, not quite enough. Take some turn around here, they'll just turn on Shoma. And a big kill found there. They do miss the stun from the bronze, so they won't catch out afterlife. The elements getting their first kill on the board, punishing Shoma the Slayer has just got a, a little too over aggressive there, and I guess just underestimated how much uh, damage the, the Spectre could turn and dish out back to him. Yeah, Afterlife wasn't able to get closer because yeah. of Cog, so the Desolate damage actually just started building up onto Sioma mid lane. They do get the gank onto Ping, and he should be dead. Here. Nice and easy. Good rotation coming out from Silent. Any sort of plus one there with the Ursa, making it. Sioma, trying to chase Goji. Goji, running away though. LeBron now hasted, making his move. Good look to punish Shoma again. Not the mana on LeBron. Straight in they go, and Shoma could certainly be in trouble here. Talked about this man before, saying he's uh, having some, you know, some very good games. This one uh, doesn't look to start off to be one all, unless they keep him alive like that. <laughs> he's, he's still surged up, and oh, the the caustic, the caustic will pop him, so he does get taken down. But yeah, second time for him. Not not as fortunate, not as great as uh, movements that we've seen from Shoma in uh, in previous series here at Dream League. He's struggling a little bit today. And yeah, not finding the, not finding as crisp rotations, but being a little bit deep there for the warlock and not having any vision of yeah. the sinking. Me, yeah, maybe not expecting the Sanking to have a haste rune as well. Yeah, just go. To chase him down like that. Now finish for SK. Five, the mid lane. Ooh, Afterlife goes treads on Nyx. Oh, that is... Yeah, well, what's, what's the reasoning there? CM aura, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he just wants to be able to put his own pressure and stay in the lane. He's he's a guy, they can't really push me out of lane. So if I just get tankier... I can actually put more pressure on this lane. So I do like that approach by him. Interesting. Like Warlock Spectre can't really push a Nyx out. And he's level 6 already even. And now he's going to make the first rotation. Vendetta ready and online. Where's he heading? Looks like he's going toward mid. There is a sentry down already. They do see it though. Oh no, it's just out of range. Oh, it's just out of range. It's just out of range. So ping should be fine here. It, is, it really is. Oh, it's literally just on so the edge. so unfortunate. Yeah, for those Vega. sentries. Ping not to be caught out by that Vendetta, and then that's always pretty big for slowing down, you know, line up with the, the Nyx Assassin. If you can avoid that first Vendetta movement, it, it really puts a slowdown on the bit. Shoma again. Constantly securing this rune. Last time it did cost him his life. This time it looks to, to be a little easier for him to get away. No penalty. Seomi would be a player to have the question mark denies. Radiance top tower is <laughs> under attack. Enjoys his high level compendium. Well, that'd be, that'd be quite, it's like 300 or something. 30, problem, isn't it? 305, 300 or something? Five. Yeah, something like all those lines. G trying to make the, another quick rotation toward top to secure that tower for Aloha, but it is spotted from 
the good defensive wards coming out from elements. And now, with Afterlife just constantly moving around, it leaves the bottom lane opened up for Seoma to get his level. Since, you know, his, his rotations, as we mentioned, have not been the most successful this game, he needs a place to recover. He really does, and he should certainly get it down here. Unlikely that the two of them uh, on elements are able to move in for a kill. Of course, one is there for Swift Ending, so if Elements can find any action elsewhere, he'll be quick to join. Afterlife though again with a vendetta after making uh, that a little bit of a trip around the map and unable to find any success. We'll Same head back bottom. towards the bottom lane. Shema, ah, I, I said he should be fine, but he comes in again just a little too close. And that's going to be the third death this game on the clock. Shema giving up all the kills. We'll see if Vega can punish. G, looking at what Swift ending they have got Afterlife. Looking to line up the stun, not messing around with the vendetta. He knows that all he needs is the stun to connect for the kill to occur and they will punish it. So again, even though Shoma goes down, it is better for Vega. They, they do punish the Spectre. But I uh, say, so yeah, a little, little suicidal on the clock today. Yeah, just a bit. Spectre now gets his first earn charge. He's a little bit under level now, so that's safe lane Spectre. Only seven on his way toward eight, since Warlock has been sitting there the whole time. Leeching experience. But Mitch, still just farming. During all of this, he's very close to that Midas on the Enigma. Interesting there as well. Rain M against Spectre only occurred five times uh, since this seven patch. The uh, does have that superior win rate. Only just, only one game, three for two, favoring the anti mage pick. Comes to the head to head between these two position ones. Afterlife, Eyes on Gogi. We'll go for the opening and well, with the positioning of Silent, easy pick for them. Having that Treads extra attack speed, yeah. does a good, good amount more damage after his vendetta hit. Yeah, you're absolutely, and, and yeah, you're absolutely bang on with, with that already. Oh, see him again. Man. He is just a sacrificial lamb. He lane really this game, is. It seems. The fourth death on the clockwork. Shoma. Uh, Caster curse. It really is. We talked. You talked him up before we came in, and understandably so, considering the other games that Vega ever had. But this this game, four deaths in ten minutes, and uh, the only man to go down on your side. I mean, it's, it's you know. That that Vega's still doing very well, but it's, uh, just a little unfortunate for him. That he's keeping himself behind like that, and uh, if anything, is kind of giving elements the boost to keep on par with Vega Squadron here in this in this early game. Yeah, it's not the earliest laning phase for a Clockwork. Like once he gets six, his targets are much clearer. Like he wants to be able to grab like, the Warlock in the yeah. back or the Enigma and isolate them. But in laning phase, it, it can be a little bit tough sometimes, as you know, you're a Clockwork support. Like, yeah, huh? can't always have it go right. Now picked up for G, so he'll be ready to start to... He's got it already. Yeah, okay. he's gone straight for it here, 11 minutes in. Phase and blink. So that's going to be pretty nice to just help focus it's, down people with the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, and I think he, I guess also what, aware with the team fight of elements that they'll be very prepared to contest a Roshan, so feeling that getting the blink quicker and being able to kill heroes is is better than getting the Vlads first and, and trying for the Roshan this, this game. Yeah. See what they could do. He's, he's hanging around with Shema at the moment. Of course, Shema mentioned just hitting the six, so they could try and make a movement as the two of them hook shot Cogs and, and Ursa jumping upon you. This is nice though for Elements. Like during all this, yeah. LeBron has just been farming. He's just perched up in the top lane. He's actually getting pretty close to his blink dagger already on the sinking, which is very important for them to have catch in the team fights and contest those dives at the towers. Swift. Yeah, this is a Showing kill. for a second. Should there be a, a dead uh, here. Yeah, no way for the Spectres to get himself out of there. TP's coming through. One of them will be cancelled. LeBron, he actually stays and commits for this. And it will cost him his life here. Uh, Shoma again. Oh, poor old clock. Poor he old was Shoma. trying so he hard was to trying de so hard to live that. He that couldn't de-aggro the tower. He was the closest oh, target on that it. that is an unfortunate golem. Oh, man. He already is... catching the back line. Yeah. Getting the Warlock and uh, yeah, a bit of a panic halt there from Gogi. Immediately gets taken down as well. So easy extra 100 gold there for the side. Um, but uh, yeah, at least Shoma's making it look like an even game. Five yep. to seven. He's all five of the deaths. All five of the deaths. <laughs> <laughs> Poor lad. Yeah, but nice aggressive ward. This is actually a ward that was been out for like the last Radiant's six minutes or so. It's about to be expiring and they do catch the eyes on Gogi as we were mentioning and then yeah. Snowballing a couple extra kills. They even almost claim that tier two tower very early on, which is pretty important actually, because then it gives Aloha a lot more access to the enemy jungle, which oh, already has sure, good yeah. access there. Yeah, so. it makes yeah, it's very, a lot harder for Swift Ending to find the safe places to, to go with the Spectre. Yeah, 
Yeah, that is the big scary thing too. Yeah. Like you, they got such an early tier one, so now it's like, man, Spectre has a very awkward place to move around the map. It's like he doesn't really have a solid place to be farming yet in this game now. Is that normally the way to go with the talents as well as Spectre, getting the armor over the plus damage? I've seen people do both. Yeah. Yeah. I see most of the people get the damage, yeah, but the it, armor can have its uses versus the Nurse lineup. I guess. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know. Is five armor really going to make the difference against the Nurse jumping on you? I mean, we'll see. Maybe it does. But, but in, it, seeing as you're going to be primarily focusing on farming, damage does seem normally normally more tempting. I guess. Yeah. Most of the time, we do see that though. Yeah. We do usually see the damage being taken on, like the Spectre, even the Anti Mage. We do see yeah, Aloha grab the damage got, on the Anti Mage. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you get you know 150 health, which is you know pretty decent for an Anti Mage, people still just you're farming. Your job yeah. isn't really to be that. You're going to get health through items. This is Battle Fury done. 14 minutes in with the treads. Very good timing for the Anti Mage. And uh, definitely uh, going to be this period of the game where he will be able to farm a lot quicker than the Spectre. Doubt about that. And so, yeah, really very little being done by elements to slow down the anti in the early stage. We saw, as you said, in the lane, the Eidolon's shutting, uh, shutting a little bit away from uh, the, the anti-mage in terms of creeps, but it's, it doesn't feel like that at all now at this stage with the uh, position that Aloha dances in. He is in a very good place. Not only just Aloha, look at, look at this afterlife. There's Nyx Assassin. Yeah. He's got Blink Dagger. It's 14 <laughs> minutes in. Like, that's your offlane Nyx who wasn't really helped at all, at all. He stayed down there alone for the most part until the until like after laning phase was pretty much done. So he's doing a very good job for himself. Gets the smoke going, they're trying to keep their aggression. He's gonna get some vision out. Maybe they do go for that Roche temp now since he does have a DD on G as well. Afterlife might just go for some vision, but we'll see if they, they wanna go for that. G's gonna make the decision right now. Let's see if they get some vision here with this rocket. Uh, no, the whereabouts of Mitch. Yeah, he and... just goes in the pit. Yeah, knowing uh, yeah, that indeed the elements are split up unlikely to get themselves together and we do see mitch he has the bkb queued up so he's okay. prepared for afterlife to try to you know if he wants to do it, get those big like black holes for the team fights Afterlife can't stop but there's still clockwork clockwork can always hook in a sure. position to stop it yeah you, you've got to be careful with how you go for it but it, it certainly makes it a lot easier yeah. there was a lot a there's lot still of his... standard magic that would have, would have been used to stop it still mana void though and clockwork ulti so it still can be stopped pretty yes. easily by the side of Big if they're in the proper position to do so. Yeah, I guess he just has to pretty much Radiant's hold off until the clock's already initiated elsewhere and uh, he can be sure that he gets the Anti-Mage in the Black Hole as well. Yeah. Which is certainly possible, you know, if, if, if Clock hooks in, Anti-Mage is going to be jumping forward. There, there's definitely going to be a, a much a bigger window for him to, to try and get a successful Black Hole off. Yeah, and they have so many different forms of like initiation. You know, with yeah. the Sand King, the Ember can even kind of be a pseudo-initiator, then the Warlock. They have like counter-initiate, initiate, and then more initiate on top of that. Like we said, they drafted for heavy, heavy team fight with the Spectre as their backup. Yeah, I do really like G's build as well. You know, no plans, just getting a bash. Blink Basher. It's, it's ready to fight, ready for the Chaos. They'll jump in here on the mid lane. They do get the Chaotic offering out, Mitch. Heading forward towards G, jumping forward the Remnant Burst. Ping Vincek actually able to pop the Aegis. And this already looking pretty good for them. They've got the Black Hole and the Epicenter straight up onto Ooh. the Abair and they'll bring him down. As Vega throwing away some massive lives in the middle lane. They go very deep that for that Warlock. Great into... stuff for Elements. They're going to get silent as well. They've got the vision here as they go straight onto the CM, take down a fourth. And, and that was Vega fighting with an Aegis. That was a huge throwaway of gold to Elements. I mean, good news for Vega. Yeah. They didn't have a low heart dance in there cocking up as well. But Elements, they, they'll be happy with that. Yeah, I mean, getting the very good black hole positioning. LeBron not even having Blink Dagger there. He's able to get a great epicenter. And even Goji, they didn't bring him down in time. He got the Warlock Golem off, and the fight does get turned. Just, I mean, that's what's going to happen when you dive between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 versus yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 massive teamfight ultimates. Definitely have to be very careful with your positioning. Yeah, they, they really can't afford to play that aggressive. Mench and Elements have the answers. Yeah, if, if they are going to play like that aggressive, they have to be able to catch the two big initiators yeah. at least. They have to be able to get the Warlock, kill him before the rock goes down, and then the Clockwork has to get the initiation on the Enigma before the Black Hole comes out. So the Battery Assault is ticking before that starts. Then doesn't let him get the hole off, but yeah, they blow a lot of 
a lot of their uh, a lot of their moves onto the warlock, and he still gets his ulti off. So, well, what do you think about the build from Swift as well? This game, he he just going for the phase into the Manta. We're not seeing seeing any sort of attempt for the Radiance this game early on. I think just like maybe the the Liquid series got to them a bit also, yeah. and I think that they look at they look at Vega's lineup. They're like, this is a fighting lineup. Like they don't really have long cooldowns. I want to be able to fight. I want to be able to match that aggression as early as possible. If I go for the Radiance build, I can't get involved at all. And since the laning phase was also going a bit rough for them, he probably made that quick adjustment. And this time around, Vega will just go for the tier one in the middle lane. Let's open up that bit of the map. At the same time, there a bit of pressure coming out to the tier two top from Elements. Round afterlife there to, to stop the pressure. Just have a nice few up as well here, and in terms of money, still uh, looking pretty nice for him. But uh, got to give it to Mitch. He is keeping himself on par in that Enigma. And the Nixus is in a great place. Still very much the Ember after that that very bad matchup in the mid lane, having to deal with the Ursa. He's still struggling to catch back up ping. He's got the bots at least. You know, he's on his way to that maze, Maelstrom. He's gonna be able to push out lanes a bit. That's that's his plan. And that, that actually could be that could be hard for him as well. You know, he's playing versus Nyx Assassin. Nyx is probably one of if not the be the best to catch Ember Spirit when he was doing those split pushes. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, the they find the catch yeah. onto Goji. There will be counterplayed as LeBron jumps in, but uh oh now he's stuck in there with them. They, looks like they don't have detection though, and in fact well this sandstorm, it, it is willing them down. They realize they've got a TP straight out of there and they will. Just before the burrow strike comes in. Uh, Horn being used here, they looks like they will at least get the CM kill out of it. Uh, but yeah, a little awkward there from Vega, jumping forward and then being like, well, oh, I've not got detection of you. There's a Cogs and Sandstorm adding up. Yeah, Afterlife has sentries, or has dust on himself with the Nyx, but yeah. Sayoma's still oh, not carrying any. I think Sayoma should probably pick up a, pick at least one up on the clockwork. His job is really just to run around and get kills happening. Haste. But he's going for that Midas, he's trying to be greedy. Gre uh, the BKB is now complete on Mitch. So, we'll see him uh, have an easy time. We, of course, in that mid lane fight, we already saw the Black Hole being very useful. Uh, even though just on, on the one hero, just having that set up post Aegis, so that they've got the catch, and just, uh, you use it after Vega jumps in upon you. All likely to get off a good duration without anything left in the tank from Vega to stop it. Yeah. I mean, it can, yeah, it can be very useful. Like, right. there is only, the, there's the Clockwork and the Mana Void, yep. but N not even just counting those, the BKB can be a very useful like frontline on him. He can just kind of like oh, walk yeah. in, pop a BKB, and they can just be like, oh god, we can't really cast any big spells on him. It's pretty much Ursa gets on him and tries to get lock him down with Basher. But G also is getting close to that BKB. So he that's going to help yeah, a lot versus the big team fights that Almond has. Bottom lane ping. Hooking up the XP. Aloha Dance pushing in this bottom lane. As expected, of course, on the anti-mage. Still keeping so very much ahead when it comes to farm. Manta style. Complete 2k gold on top of that. It was a, it was a quick battle fury timing, and uh, still, since that point, really hasn't been touched at all by Ellen. Level he's, 18. He's yeah, had he's all feeling, the space on the map he's wanted. He's feeling very good about himself. Actually, jump toward it for ping. See TP's in. Could this be another situation where Vega may have just jumped in a little too far? And I think it could be as Afterlife found in the tree line and punished. They, they, they Got to hold back. We, the diving towers is definitely uh, where Vega's giving up uh, a fair bit of golden XP in this game. He was trying to go for the blink carapace and then just instantly bring down the Ember Spirit, but I don't think the Flame Guard was popped. I think he just it, he thought that it was, so he tried to go for that kind of effort. But slight little mistake there coming out from Vega. But either way, Aloha just backs up and starts cleaning out the enemy jungle again. That's the that's the good thing though about being so over farmed here on the anti mage. He's able to deny a kind of a lot of the farm for elements because elements yes. they want to be farming on their side of the map still with the specter. But having an anti mage in your jungle just taking all your camp stuff really does hurt. And look at the warding coming out from Vega. All four in ex the the deepest actual that's, positions that you pretty much can have. That them. is some super deep wards. Yeah, they really ah. want to be able to watch the movements. They want to watch exactly where the enigma is, where the sanking is, so they can set up and take fights on their own accord because. <laughs> It can be pretty tough. Silent, is he setting up for a solo kill onto Goji? He's going for it. Yeah, he is with a freezing field. We'll see if the shadow word's going to be enough. And uh, that, oh, it's going to be oh, close, so close. close. Just enough heals. And again, the turnaround's there. Elements. See an opening. Uh, these. I mean, Vaker are going for some greedy, greedy plays. That was cute. Dude, he was so close. The Brockwork was coming in too. It, it, it was just, close. The, the healing word the healing word really just saved him. Yeah. Uh, the shadow word. Shadow sorry. word too strong. 
He wanted it. I mean, the, at the end of the day, Vega can certainly say they are creating space for Aloha Dance. Yeah. And the whole game, that has really been the story of it. He's just, yeah, he's yeah. completely full free from level 20 What's now. What's he just picked up? He's BKB just... full. Oh, he's got the BKB done as yeah. well as the Manta. Oh, there you go. He can turn up to these fights and not have to worry one bit. BKB, pretty good item versus Ember, yep. Spectre, Sanking, Enigma, Warlock. <laughs> Very good versus all the heroes on the side of Elements. All right. We may, we may see Vega hop back for Roshan if they want. Let's back up. They do have these very deep wards, so they do see all of the moving coming out from Elements. Now D ward coming out from Goji. Jumping in. Oh, actually, you know, with the stun. Going around with the chains. And then the Fatal Bonds. Missing out on a potential kill there, G. Come forward again. Trying to hold back this push here with a slight of this, but they'll stand their ground, Vega Squadron. Finish off the tier 2 tower. Mormon is the bank of anti -mage. Jump forward with the burrow strike. Quick turn around with the frostbite. A hook shot across from Shoma the Slayer. Lays down the cogs. There's a, the jump in from Mitch and he actually gets the black hole. He's got two. I don't think they can cancel this. They can't with the BKB out. They'll get the clockwork kill. They'll find Afterlife again. They're a second pick off for them. Now G jumping in. Trying to down with the chaotic offering stun. Holding G back. He will end up finishing off one of them. Uman's ticking down very low. He'll get the slow onto Gogi. But LeBron, he's there with the burrow strike. He holds G back. G, oh, with the mana void from Aloha Dance. At the end of the day, it is all Vegas fight. But Let's see how much the CMO did. Yeah, he was on the high ground that whole time using CMO. Yeah, that was... 4,000 damage. Oh my ridiculous. god. 4,000 damage. 3,700 yeah. damage coming out from the CM freezing field. And geez, that was pretty cool though, Mitch, with that fresh picked up Blink Dagger with his BKB it was from a before. Good black hole. He gets the two big heroes, yeah. he gets the anti mage he gets the clockwork in it. But G just able to come in there with his fresh BKB as well, yeah. able to just rinse down everybody and silent with incredibly good positioning on the Crystal Maiden on the high ground with that ultimate, able to do massive amount of damage onto elements. Yeah, and a lower dance of course into the end. Uh, easy mana void. Pick up a couple of kills. He tried to use it a lot in that fight too. He, he, was, was like, he kept canceling like the Enigma. One yeah. G was going on the Enigma in the fight too. He was kept like trying to throw him out there, but he was like a little bit scared because he was low. But then yeah, afterwards, once they do get that chase down and all them are starting to get a bit more healthy, he's able to get that turn. Yeah, we can see uh, eighteen thousand net worth on his mage. He's pulling. He's got about seven thousand ahead of the Ooh. Spectre. A uh, swift ending has finished off the defusal, so with the Manta defusals, there's still a fair bit of damage he can he can offer considering the, the how far he is behind. But uh, overall, it's just still going to be this issue of being able to bring down the anti mage. Bash done as well. Very yeah, much ready for any sort of fight. Aloha dance. Aloha is getting items like every two yeah. minutes right now. Same thing with G. G. G just finished the BKB and now he has a full desolator. Both of them are keeping on par. Level 20 on the Ursa, level 22 on Anti Mage. They are keeping the pace going. You know, they did, like we've been saying a lot of these times. You know, you recognize the cooldowns of the ultimates. Black Hole is still down. They're able to try to go for these objectives and just get more map control. And with the Aegis, of course, too. That you know, they just finished up Rush, so they can be a bit more aggressive. Afterlife still on the prowl. Looking for any type of opportunities. These deep wards are also paying massive dividends. For they're really they're always knowing yeah. exactly where Elements is setting up on the map. Yeah, certainly ain't making these fights a little easier for Vega, but kills 14 for 14. Do you see this? Oh my oh. god, they're jumping into the base going for Mitch, but Mitch, yeah, catch, catches eyes of them really quickly. Maybe seeing if you can catch anything in return. He's looking for Afterlife, and uh, well, they're going to horn in on this one. And Afterlife, oh, they've got detection. Ooh, nice. If they didn't get that kill, that would have been pretty painful. Committing horn for it, but indeed, the, the AoE at the Remnant Burst, enough to bring down the Nyx. See if they can move on for more. There are still members of Vega Squadron in the neighborhood, and Silent gets caught up by a Burrow Strike. The Malefist, again, though, detection, is it there? Well, oh, they need oh, more than that, because he's the one to jump in and shred the Enigma immediately, the BKB. Not doing anything in terms of uh, keeping that Enigma alive. They'll take down LeBron as well, and they're not done yet. Low Ardance looking for the Warlock. G's going to be there as well, jumping in with a slow double kill for the Ursa as Vega Squadron pick up a third. Punish elements very heavily for trying to chase Vega Squadron and, and leave their base and, and look for, for further kind of follow on kill. Silent being so like over farmed as this crystal maiden picking up those kills, you know, having a glimmer cape with his drums and he also takes the 250 health talent because he's already level 15. That just that was, those like three things literally just saved him there and caused that entire fight to happen for Vega. So Silent there, almost looking like he might be out of position, but his buddies were there in the vicinity to save him. So only losing afterlife for three heroes. Very good trade coming up from Vega.
Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Silent's playing super aggressive this game and it's working. There he is. Let's see him. Yeah. You mentioned some really, really big freezing fields amidst the team fights. Now he's got a medallion too. He's on his way to his solar crest. This CM is huge. They, oh, he's almost, yeah, he's almost level 25 before 30 minutes. That's a good point. Nice little stat there. Plus. Only three players have ever gotten to 25 before 30 I don't, minutes. Of, I, seven, of 7 of 7.05. Yeah. I don't think he's going to make it. I mean, a minute to do 75% of the love final level. And now if he gets black old. Yeah, I, I, okay. There we we get saved. If he could turn and fight though, then uh, he will certainly make it. But it looks like Shema would just be the sacrificial lamb here. That is a, his job. Yeah, game. absolutely. Saving the anti-mage is worth it. Yeah, One minute to get. Let's keep eyes on him. Let's see if he's going to get it. I don't think he will. Maybe he knows too. He's got 50. I think he's going to get gonna it. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. If he makes his way down toward the secondary side of the camps If and he the goes ancients, and clears the other ancients, yeah. He's going to get it. Then I think he's going to get, get it. it. Send those illusions he's, mid. Keep it going. Come on, Alon. He's got to get those ancients. It's all about the ancients here. Come on, be faster. He's going to do. I mean, actually, is the ancients got? Are the ancients going to be enough? I don't. I think he's going to be very close. It's going to be. I don't think I he's going to get think enough. I think the ancients it's are going to be, be enough. Just, just short of it, yeah, I think. The just ancients shy. are going to be just short. Yeah, oh, it's not quite enough here. Oh, he's got 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Are there any camps over here? He's got one, two these camps. These two camps. These two. I don't think they'll do. I don't it. think they'll do it either. They won't do it. He needs. Maybe the lane. The lane creeps the will certainly help. The idolons, maybe. Yeah. Uh, right, there's a fight going on top. Yeah. I'm going to take a look at that. Okay. Right, top line. Silent Glimmer caked up. Ping Vincent with a jump in. G coming in with a response. Goes for the Sand King. Freezing field again from Silent. Clearing out the illusions, but still Swift standing. Still, they jump forward. Mitch coming in, looking for the potential to, to land some sort of ultimate. But no, he hasn't actually got it. Swift standing only just being saved. They will hold back. G, they bring him down. Afterlife. On the ground. Again, looks like a lack of vision, meaning the APG will have to back away. Bottom lane, a lot of pushing in. He did hit 25. We'll have to, uh, he got it. He, he did get, get it. it. It was did at like 2951. I was oh, looking okay. at the clock when I saw the talent uh, being chosen. But yeah, Afterlife also having a full Aghanims finished up after all the space being given. Oh. Aloha just going in and gets Mitch. Yeah, the BKB no chill play straight down the throat of Enigma. Cutting him to pieces. Can they kill him? That's the question. The BKB on cooldown. He'll Manta nice get out hook. again. Yes, yeah, Shoma with the save. Afterlife's just going to jump in on this one with the spike carapace. Trying to bury himself. It, it's not going to keep him alive. A low hard arch though. Ready to turn back in as he jumps up to the high ground. Looking Where for the a bash. Doesn't actually get it there. Still going to look to play around with the, the side of elements. They've got a shrine though. So tanky right now though. Yeah, he'll jump out. Still have some time to, to reset. So we're standing looking for the chase, using the defusal charges. So almost like, Brian, just let me be. Let me die for you. Again, the, the sacrifice <laughs> at the clock. How many times has poor That's Vega nine. fallen down? Nine times. Poor yeah. Seoma, nine deaths for for the good cause. Uh, absolutely. I mean, earlier on, maybe not so maybe much for the so good much, cause, but, but now, yeah, now the deaths are warranted. Yeah. But still, again, you know, they, they're getting the gold elements. They're definitely having the best game they've had so far today. Uh, but it's, it's still questionable whether it's going to be good enough because Aloha Dance's anti-mage continues to just outscale this spectre by a, a fair few miles here really. Uh, but a 10k gold difference. We did state our concern though, you know, we about did. the anti-mage. Yeah. The anti-mage was definitely going to be a problem this game and Vega's done a really good job of creating space for him as you keep mentioning. You know, they're forcing fights kind of away from him. Afterlife keeps running around. G as well just kind of forcing the issue and pressing it super hard. While yeah. Aloha literally is just He's kind of just been jungling the majority of this game, but he does have five kills as well, having that good laning start, and then, of For course, sure. picking up a couple I mana mean, void kills. Just the stats uh, that he's had, a, a, just goes to show how good of a game he's he's having. Five zero three on the KDA. So we're what, about 430 CS, I believe, yeah. coming up at 32 minutes in, so easily beating the 10 CS a minute at this stage. And I mean, what's the GPM? Can you check his GPM? I bet his GPM is pretty impressive. I don't remember what hot Top though, it is. should be on the drop down. Yeah, it was nearly, nearly 800 GPM. The anti-mage. Afterlife, finding swift ending, just burning out all his mana. Oh, oh just off the mark. But they, swift ending's out of they, mana. They may still get it. Missile. Now, see LeBron coming in with a save with a three-man burrow strike. Mitch coming forward, the black hole gets off two here. They've got no way to cancel it again through the BKB. And that will bring the Nyx Assassin down. G plus the BKB trying to fight back. The Kelding Offering dropped onto Silent. They'll bring him and G down as well. Meanwhile, Aloha Dance is looking for the rat. Sanky. Uh, sorry, the Ember Spirit is going to be the one to be focused as Ping Vincent comes in with the TP out of mana. Learner by the mana void. Lost two. Kill this anti-mage without the black hole. 
very he's unlucky. Man up. He is. He's just going to turn towards LeBron. Pop the Sandstorm. See how aggressive Lower Dance wants to be. He really does not care about these three heroes. They have very little straight physical damage on the side of Elements. Even when the Ember and Spectre are up, it's... I mean, it's better, of course. You know, Spectre did go for that, like, very bright clicky build yeah. with the Manta Diffusal Eagle into Butterfly. And it's... But, yeah, he's so big at this point. Level 25 and just oh, maxed out. Oh, and just dive in Tier 4. So at least attempting. There will be a Burrow Strike into the Epicenter. But he pops the BKB. Hook shot. Going to be off the mark. But again, a lower dance could easily just blink his way back out to safety. And it really is just this anti-mage that... The pick, the play has just stopped Elements really getting anything great out of what they've done, even though they, they themselves are making good moves. We're seeing Mitch get some really good black holes off, but it, it, it's just never when uh, Aloha dances in the neighborhood because he's always somewhere else getting twice as much work done uh, than the Spectre can. Yeah, it's every single time he sees, like, Seoma not in position or anti yeah. not in position, he just goes for those, like, one or two man black holes, which is it's good. They're just very reliant on that for the lockdown. Gold and sweet. Continuing the aggression. Roche just respawns, so we'll probably see them scout that one out very soon, and they do. The rocket comes through. LeBron now knows as well. Elements is aware of this one. All their ultimates will be coming back up shortly. 40 seconds for Epi, about 20 seconds okay. for Enigma's so, ultimate yeah. as well. And a butterfly is complete for Swift. So that's that evasion is certainly going to help out. Yeah. Aloha still has slots to build to switch it up. You know, he went yeah. for the Moon Shard in his inventory. He didn't go for the Blood of Butterfly this game because there's no natural... He doesn't really need it because, like we said, there's no natural right-clickers on the side of Elements. They all just kind of do their, their different kind of damage. So, right away, he queues up the MKB when he sees the Butterfly. He eats the Moon Shard, grabs the Aegis. They're going to now make their go toward, for the high ground. They got eyes on LeBron. Are they going to be able to go for a catch onto him here? The hook? And it tries to predict uh, where he's going to blink to. Doesn't quite get the angle. Oh yeah, this push is going to be very hard to stop. With that Aegis, very little that Vega need to really sit back and wait for now. They have what it what it takes in terms of damage output and survivability to break the high ground. Yeah, now they, I mean, with the Aether Lens 2 on the Nyx, he can just like be perched up behind them it's inside that burrow while they go for that Siege. Yeah, for, for Elements now, what, one whiffed ultimate could, could be the, the potential for Vega to win the game. They need to land these ults. After like actually in. getting put, he's putting himself in a super aggressive spot. Oh, they'll actually get the first stun onto Low Dance. They brought him down to half health. BKB coming out from him, but Mitch also did pop his own BKB. And a bit of a panic as the anti mage jumped upon him. G trying to push mid. They'll come into the two man burrow strike. Horn being popped as well now. G with the BKB, but the three man chaotic offering is there. G chases down the Sand King, finishes Mitch. him off again. A low hard arch here, focusing Mitch, really trying to make it impossible for Mitch to get his job done here. They will keep Mitch alive. Those ping holds back the anti mage with the chains back towards the middle. Swift being focused. He's down for 80 seconds, does not have the goal for buyback. So they're without their spectre. And teammates getting very low. They are going to be able to pop the Aegis on this defense. They do still have the Epicenter and the Black Hole. He's got five seconds on BKB for Mitch. Let's see what they could do. He's holding on. He wants to wait. He wants to play it safely. The Golem's still up. Taken down now by a lower dance. He can sphere pop, but yeah, he's ready. He has that BKB. He has that Black Hole. We'll see how good to Vega get. Jump in onto Gogi. Burrow Strike to hold back the Ursa. They'll save the Warlock. The Raxa down. He'll jump in with the Black Hole, but it's only on to one. And the anti-mage, he, he's just not taking enough damage for, for, uh, for Elements to be able to be successful with that play. As they, he's just too big, he's too fat a low hard answer. As they'll lose the middle racks. Elements starting to fall to the end of this game now. As their borderline being mega creeped by Vega Squadron. And GG is GG's indeed mod. cool. But uh, they certainly gave a better fight against Vega than they were able to against Liquid. Uh, but uh, there was the, the the little problem at the anti mage this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, the, the last big anti mage in hindsight. Like we did look at it, and we were like, okay, they're trying to match greed with greed, but it actually was such a good pick versus it what really Vega was. had, or yeah. versus what Elements had. Elements was pretty much all magic damage, so.